telecast going round the world to all parts of the globe. tonight beaten by Australia at Eden Park last weekend yeah, ironically, would, uh, would have lowered their confidence somewhat they'll be out to redeem so Ray, ironically that 34 20 scoreline is what they beat Australia by in that World Cup final back in 2008 I'm, I'm with you I get the feeling that New Zealand they'll have sat down they'll have watched the video from last week they'll have pinpointed certain areas Thank you. The end of sets some decision making and say there 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 that's what we've got to turn around if we get that right we can win peter sterling and phil gould in the commentary booth <laughs> wally's on the sideline and the cameron smith kicks off for australia and it goes into the dead ball area and mac henry brings it out Dominant. this massive young fellow from penrith and he'll play the ball. You heard the word dominant. I'll tell you what, he got up very slowly. McKendry, he, he might be rolling a little bit, rocking and rolling just a tad. He's got the wobbly boot on. He's all over the place. Ohio tries to make a dummy half run just to clear this danger zone, but the Australian defence in the ruck was compressed. And now Benji goes inside with a ball for Bronson Harrison. And Harrison will play the ball on the 30-metre line. So Lulawai gives it away, and Fien, wearing the number seven, turning the ball over to Jeremy Smith in the 13 jumper. With one sock up and one sock down. I'm not quite sure whether that's uh, got some kind of omen about it. But here's Slater now, marking it back on his 20-metre line, taking it towards the centre. And it's Adam Blair who meets him, and Billy Slater, who scored 15 tries at test level in 11 appearances from memory. And can you believe this is only the third time Lottie Takiri, who plays the ball, has played rugby league at Suncorp Stadium. Penalty goes Australia's way. You're saying Jeremy Smith's got one sock up and one sock down. I think both socks are down. He's got a guard on what must be a calf injury. You can see there, it's not quite his sock. And that penalty there are the things that New Zealand need to get out of their game. They don't want to invite Australia down into attacking positions too easily. So Luke Lewis is with the ball. Dominic! And he'll play the ball 37 Stand metres down. away from Hulk! the New Zealand line. Hulk! Last rugby league match of the season started on this day, nine months ago, with the Indigenous All-Stars clash at Skill Park. And ten of these players were there. As it goes through Cronk and he finds Lewis working on the blind side, keeps the legs tucked up underneath him as he's tackled on the eastern touchline. Played back to Takiri, gone away to Kronk. He drifts across the ground, a couple of forwards ran deep for him. Lockyer throws a pass, bounces away for Brent Tate. And Tate looking to unload. Oh, his winger might have put his foot on the sideline. Ruled not to have happened. And Morris will play the ball. 22 metres out now. They're running towards the Milton Street end of the, of the ground here at Suncorp, Australia. Gallon taken hard. Lulawai driving in. But uh, McHenry was the one that put the meat into it. Now it's Lockyer. He puts a little kick. Oh, he's made a mistake. The fullback go higher. And there's a try for Australia. Scored by Brent Tate. One of many test tries. His 16th in his 23rd test. Brent Tate has scored off the back of a Lockyer kick after Lance Ohio has been clean bowled. 
they've maintained the pressure of the Australians. They got the penalty, they got down at the right end of the field, and Darren Lockyer put through a kick that looked fairly innocuous, but it's on the ground and a rugby league ball can do anything. He's overrun it completely. In fact, it's a really poor attempt there from Lancer Higher. You'd expect better. He didn't give himself much chance of gathering that one in. So Brent Tate, as I said, is veteran centre who is bound for the Cowboys in the NRL next year. Gets his 23rd test away to a flying start with his 16th try. And a brilliant start for Lockyer, of course. As Peter said, it didn't look, it didn't look venomous, but it was. So welcome back to the nine coverage on the Wide World of Sports on this Saturday night. Australia versus New Zealand, and they're away to a flying start, the Kangaroos. Cameron Smith, three from four at Eden Park. From the touchline, 22 out. The kick is going straight. The kick is straight between the big sticks. So Cameron converts. It's 6-0 Australia early. Ray Warren asked the question in the lead-up to that try whether or not Australian winger Brett Morris had his foot on the line. Let's have a look here as he gets the ball from Brent Tate. He's going across field. He's well on the line, and the linesman is right there. Now, Brett Morris, I think, did that in the grand final, leading up to the Dragons' first try, and he's managed to put his Duke on the line again tonight in the lead-up to the Australian first try. Linesman's missed it. He couldn't have been any closer, the touch judge. The picture shows that. And Gallon is who'll play the ball for Australia. 27 metres out from his own line. This is Willie Tonga. And he'll play it now. Tackled there by Marshall and Smith. And Shillington hard and met hard by Blair. And an awful play the ball, but he gets a penalty from it. He's ruled against Blair coming up with the boot. It was a big run by Shillington, but then an equal performance in defense well that was really shillington putting the ball well forward of the mark there i mean he'd been dominated in the tackle he he should have backed up before he played that ball he put it behind blair's feet not much going for new zealand early second ball getting onto the ground as it's played there by lewis and then from smith it's found shillington again going back and looking for blair again and blair it is that wraps him up with help this time from McKendry and Jeremy Smith, then Cronk, and they pepper this blind side down Australia's left side. Ohio makes no mistake, and that's not as Nightingale who's got the ball. Well, they needed that New Zealand as Ohio makes some ground up the middle, off to a fly of the Australians, but they've been given some help there. Important for New Zealand to stay in contact early, and this will help. They get their first penalty of the night in past games when Australia have dominated possession. The scoreboard is ticked over. New Zealand have to make sure that it doesn't tick any more than six. That's a terrible blunder, Rabbits, isn't it, that first try? I mean, the, the, the linesman's standing right over the top of them when he catches the ball. You saw he was out. How do they miss that? Luluai taking the free kick, and Bronson Harrison, who performs brilliantly at any level, playing the ball on the 30-metre line. Luluai to the middle of the ground for Nathan Feed, and he goes to Matalino, and he'll play the ball 22 metres out. Can they level? Here's their first chance at it. His Mannering playing centres tonight in 12. And he'll play it 10 metres out from the line, up at the Caxton Street end of the ground. To Nathan Feed again, the little general in seven. Oh, Marshall's pass looked marginal, and Harrison is put away. We've had four. So two to go. They come away from Lula White to Jeremy Smith, who backs into them and stands in the tackle. Now he calls Hill. By that time, Slater had upended him. This is the last. Here it is with Feed. He goes across. He's looking for Sam Perrett. And Perrett leaves the ground. And it's going out for a restart for Australia on the 10 metre line. And again, just those little things. That's a poor kick. It had to be on the try line, maybe giving them a chance at scoring or getting a restart, but it's a simple handover. Nice defence there from Matt Scott. He saw Jeremy Smith coming. One of Smith's plays close to the line, moved in and crunched him. 
It was a poor kick selection, Peter, wasn't it? I mean, if that was you on fifth tackle, you'd have rolled that into the end goal along the ground, tried to get it back. Well, you've got to give yourself two chances. Firstly, to score the try, and secondly, if you don't score the try, for the restart under the posts. And it just it was a poor percentage play as the Australians now through Cooper Cronk. He's looking for a 40-20. This is close. This is great. What a kick from Cronk. Inch perfect, and they'll get the scrum for that's a confidence booster if ever you've seen one you've just seen New Zealand put a bad ending to their set ending of course with Sam Perrett straddling the sideline here's the kick and again just to explain to maybe some non rugby league people or overseas viewers in the game of rugby league if you kick the football from inside your own 40 and find the touch line inside the opposition 20 meters you get the ball back it's a big play Cooper Crump, he's done it so often for the Melbourne Storm, and he's done it beautifully tonight in the green and gold. You're talking about people who maybe don't know the rules all that well, that would certainly be the case. We're going all over the place tonight, and here is Cooper Cronk, man responsible. Tackle 10 metres out from the line, Matalino making the tackle with her higher, and here's Smith, a dummy before he hits the lock forward, Gallon. Two. And Gallon will play it. They're close to the line. They're leading 6 0. Gallon might have put one on Lula Wise Chin. His five day for Tate looking for another. Play the ball centimeters away from the line. They go very wide and deep to Lockyer. He does the same thing. Crock puts a kick in, end on end. Nightingale is there. He'll be hammered by the Australians. Line drop out. So they gave themselves a chance of scoring a try or getting the ball back as Peter was just explaining up the other end of the park. He did well there Cooper Cronk because it was a disjointed play there from the Australians. A lot of players had gone through early thinking Lockyer was going to kick. Look they're all in front. Comes back to Cooper Cronk. He can't pass it to anyone. Everyone backs up, gets themselves back on side and he makes a great play out of what started off as a poor sequence. And that's the difference in quality between the two teams both last week and in the early stages this week. It's a massive drop kick from Marshall. But about 55 metres on the full is Shillington with a big run and again they meet him and hammer him. <laughs> he did well to gather that one in David Shillington. Uh, Darren Lockyer couldn't get it on the full and now his front row partner. Good strong charge there from Matt Scott. He was still able to run 20 metres though Shillington which indicates that the chase might have been all that and his Lockyer joining in the right side. Slater's with it. Slater can see the line. Gets it away but oh it's all gone upside down. Well, I'll tell you what was upside down, the New Zealand defence. Here we got a player down injured. It's Billy Slater who surged into that hole. Beautifully constructed play, right from the play of the ball. Watch the way they suck the New Zealand defenders in. Cameron Smith goes to the line. Beautiful ball out the back. Looks like Thayday's going to get it. Mannering's been caught out. Three on one. Slater decides to make the surge and then can't get the pass on the outside to Morris to score. But wonderfully constructed play by the two playmakers, Cameron Smith. Look at Slater get absolutely shirt fronted by Lancer High. No wonder he's down. That knocked the wind out of him. But he's up really the kid. Beautiful play. What wonderful play. Lockyer and Cameron Smith. Gee whiz, you got a big head start with those two boys in your team. Hey, Do you like that, Rabbits? Hey, Jim. Heading Jeremy. Scrum then. Ten metres out from the line. And the New Zealanders winning it and mannering. Taking it out some 15 metres from the line. Before it goes away on the right side for Harrison. And he's hammered there by Scott. And played there inside the 20 metre line for Jeremy Smith. To shoulder arms and he goes ahead. But he's met again by the likes of Shillington. And Scott and Cameron Smith, the entire front row. And here's Marshall with a little pass back to Matalino. Back on his 20, 30 meter line, they are now. So they've used four tackles, the black and whites, and this is Blair tackled on their own 40 meter line. Adam Blair. Five Melburnians in the team tonight. Slater feeling it. Takiri goes back. Slater stays with him. But then the New Zealanders and Kenny Dow in particular with Nightingale. They make the tackle, he's gone in the touch. Well, Takiri 
Went back that way, inviting the problem. Yeah, good stuff there from the New Zealand defence. They kept momentum in the tackle. Going sideways. And they got numbers there. I guess the one thing in, in Lottie Takiri's defence there was that he's, at one stage his feet were picked up off the ground and that would normally be called a tackle. But the referee allowed it to continue. Trying to get up. Tony Archer in his eighth international. Ball in. Refereeing the second Four Nations final. Oh, higher in from the back and he almost uh, beat Slater. Slater looked as though he really wanted a part of him then. He went back for seconds too. Yeah, I think you're right, Pete. He had the entree, went back for mains. <laughs> I think he would have hung around for dessert had he had the time. Now Jeremy, and he's taken by Scott. Matthew eating up this opportunity. Ten metres out, can they score the Kiwis? Lulawai gone through the scene, on to Marshall, now to Mannering. But Brent Tate's his former Warriors teammate, equal to the task. And then it's gone away with Lance O'Hire drifting across, grabbing across. Blair taken down hard, running sideways, that's the treatment you get. Tate again was strong. Now okay. it's Fien, rolls it in, Takiri bats it, line drop out, that's better. Well, it's a far better end of the set of six. Mind you, leading up to that point, I think Australia's defence looks very comfortable. Every time New Zealand moves the ball, runs through their repertoire of plays, it just looks like Australia knows exactly what they're going to do, and they've covered them comfortably. At least Nathan Fien was smart on letting on last play. He gets a restart. Yeah, it's really become a standard kick. You're hitting the ball so that it, it actually bounces away from the dead ball line and, and curves back in towards the chasers. And Cameron Smith has got a nice piece of that. He'll land on the halfway line with some height. And Sam McKendry picks up 15 metres. Well, Scott, hasn't he had a good start to the game? Scott up high with a shoulder charge. Legitimate. Shillington was underneath. Blair goes ahead. So 25 out. Down the middle corridor of the ground. Lulaway no look. Fiend goes on. Madalino can't handle it. Picked up by Lockyer. Advantage has been applied. Back for Slater now. And he comes out on his tackle just inside the the 20 meter line. In fact, it's Kronk and not Slater. Play back for Smith. Gone to Gallon. And Paul put down inside the 30 meter line. Taken by Lulaway and Nathan Fiend. It's Brent Tate. Getting the first and only try of the game at the third minute for Australia. Tom Leroy Lars out there now as Willie Tonga scoots out of dummy half. Matt Scott off after 15 minutes. He gave Tim Sheens a quality 15, there's no doubt about that. 11, 12 Queenslanders in the side. And of course that is a recognition of their domination at origin level. So it's gone away from Marshall to... Oh! Mannering's lost it. Archer's found it high. It's Leroy Lars. Only just crossed the sideline. Well, he stopped as a shot there, Mannering. What's this? He bounces up off the ball. He actually knocked the ball out, and then the arm went up around the neck. It wasn't around the neck that forced the ball out. Good tackle there by Leroy Lars. I'm not even sure it was that high, but... it. It certainly looked awkward enough. They can't blame him for, for giving the penalty, I think. A little bit of Movember going on there from Tom Leroy Lars. Where's your Mo Rabbits? I tried, but I failed. There's Matalino. He thought he saw a little gap there. He tried to squeeze between Thayday and Tate. It's gone now to the right side for Smith to use Eastwood. And Greg will play the ball 20 away. New Zealand getting some opportunities now. And here's Marshall linking in, running a blindside play. Mannering picked up. And a penalty for putting him in a dangerous position. Again from Brent Tates. I think that's an accident. I, I think the way Mannering went and the way Tate attacked him, it, it's a total accident. He ends up over the top. I think it's just a good tackle and momentum forced their bodies in that direction. No real fooling. Interestingly, tonight, New Zealand don't go for the penalty goal. They're down by six. They look for the try. There's Madalino. 6-0 down, New Zealand. 
good opportunity here for them. As Eastwood finds Blair and he goes short to Smith. And Smith hunching over, looking to get rid of it. Blair stayed with him. And Smith, in fact, held by the other Smith for probably too long. Here's Marshall diving around close to the line. Benji will play it. Third tackle for the Kiwis. Lulawai has a dig. Saw the line. He was arching over it. Put down eventually by Kronk. Now they go back for Fien. Fien puts this kick across. And Perrett's got a leaping kick on this, but it's gone into touching goal. So it's a 20 metre. They're saying off from New Zealand here. The challenge again. There's a coach Stephen Kearney. I thought there was a real good opportunity where Blair passed short to Jeremy Smith. Had he thrown the ball out the back, I'm pretty sure New Zealand would have had a big overlap. Let's have a look at it. Little chain passing here. Bang. Now look, if he passes the ball out the back, that'd have had four on two on the outside. That's a play they should persevere with. Sean in the change passing with the forwards, then shot it out the back to Lance O'Hire and Benji Marshall. They just might outnumber them on that side. Kearney's got a tip to his players there. They had them cold. Two. Sean! To Kiri playing the ball. Third time these two nations have met this year. Australia winning in Melbourne, Trans Tasman 12 8, and then at Eden Park 34 to 20. Bird is on there. And here's Gallon out the back. It was a Benji type of pass as he was tackled by Benji. And that's an awkward way to go down there for Willie Tonga. He's okay, although he's now gone back to ground. Here's Gallon, and Gallon is held by Jeremy Smith, and Bronson Harrison involved. Underneath there was Kenny uh, Kenny Dow, Rugby League Player of the Year in New Zealand, Centre of the Year at the international level. The kick is high. Perrett went up, put that leading leg out as a protector, and the ball has been played, and Ohio runs at 5A, and Leroy Lars. So the ball to be played on the 20-metre line. Archer standing back on the 10 meter defense line just the one referee of course the match being played under international rules and here is nightingale from the premiers st george illawarra play back to lulawa now again from the dragons and nathan fiend drives it down the ground and rolled into the in goal for morris who let it go and he didn't rush in did he no, that's unfortunate for new zealand Fourth tackle, it was a better kick there. It found open space and the chase was good. It didn't bounce well wait, for them, but wait, not wait, a bad wait. tactic as we go sideline to Wally Lewis. Could be a concern in the Australian camp. Brent Tate on the right hand side of the field, he's got some real problems with his cop a, a knock and uh, the last tackle he was involved in. He's having real trouble being able to show any strength on it at the moment. He's just out plenty of punishment, particularly to Simon Mannering. I was going to make the point his defence has been very very strong and here's Slater playing the ball on the halfway line he has to lift Blair as he gets up to play the ball his five day Slater quite aggravated by that tackle Manu has gone on Mantellino comes off Cameron Smith gives it to Darren Darren goes to Luke Lewis who looked back on the inside but he was shut down on the 30 meter line lovely footwork there from Luke Lewis oh, oh, problem for Luke oh dear it was beautiful footwork. He caught and stepped into one motion and, and really cut inside a, a New Zealand defender there to get himself into the backfield. But, gee whiz, this doesn't look good. Players are calling to the sideline straight away. Yeah, he's in some distress, isn't he? he? He just moved over to the right-hand side of the field too. He started on the left for the, the Kangaroos tonight but with the introduction of Greg Bird. Luke came over to this side of the field, allowing Greg to operate to the left. But an ankle problem here. What's the way he catches and steps into one motion? That's lovely. And it looks like his right ankle has gone in underneath here. Oh, I don't want to watch this. Ouch. 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 I, I hate looking at these things on replay. But yeah. He, he knows. And I the think players that's are television, isn't it? Yeah. I'll tell you what we'll do. We'll take a break and pop back to you in just a moment. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So he's coming out of there, Luke Lewis. It's the second time in the Four Nations that this has been the, the case. There's David Ferner, by the way, the assistant coach to Tim Sheens. Darren. Darren. 
there's Luke Lewis uh, being assisted from the ground. Memory says me correctly, he had to leave the field against Papua New Guinea on the opening weekend, and this injury looks much more serious. And he's being chaired from the ground now. Luke Lewis from Penrith. It's a terrible way to end what's been an outstanding season for him. He thoroughly deserves his place as a starting second rower in this Australian side. This will be last play when we resume. It's tackle five against the Australians. Thide will play the ball. Last tackle. Nate Miles has gone on from the Roosters. And uh, just outside the 30 metre line, and uh, Lockyer goes very, very high. Nightingale's underneath it. Oh, it's gone all over the place. Might have come off Tonga, and it's gone back to New Zealand. Bat bat in the field of play. Ohio cleaning it up. Now it's come away with Marshall. A metre out from the line. And now Kenny Dow. Grimaces as he takes the ball ahead like a forward. That's a good tough run. Now Eastwood backs him up with another strong effort. Well, it's even better, isn't it? They're, they're two really brave runs from those boys. Here they go, the Kiwis with Lulawai. Fancying that he can find something down the middle. Miles is the man that nailed it. Yeah, he's lost it, Thomas Lulawai, in the play the ball. And that ball undid all the good work. He possibly should have given the ball to New Asala. It would wound up after the Eastwood charge as well. well that was bad luck because the, the work from Kenny Dow and Eastwood was tremendous. Last one! Nice. Here on last play, they're looking to get a kick. And he poor play the ball. Dear All ball. the little things add up to be big. 32 metres out from their own line, the Kiwis go into defence mode, and Lockyer goes on to Slater. And here's Tate now. And Wally was telling us he was carrying a problem. At this point of the match, they're 30 metres away, and again, they're seemingly aggravated by things that are happening in the tackles. And Friday will play the ball. 25 out, middle ground. Lubawai was the chief tackler. Cameron Smith, a show, and then goes behind, then goes to Prong, then to Slater, outside. I thought there was going to be an outside-inside ball, but Tonga's lost it. It went backwards, and it's come down with Takiri, but he's called it. It's gone forward. Ooh. Archer's called it up. He's going to pack a scrum. He'll give the Kiwis loose head and feed. Ooh. Cooper Cronk just waving for the players to calm things down. He thinks they're a little bit frantic at the moment. You know, for, for all the action we've seen, and Australia, I think, have dominated, it's only 6-0, and there was a fair bit of good fortune about the Australian try with a bounce that eluded the fullback Lance Ohio, and Brent Tate was able to score. So whilst you feel as Australia are on top, the scoreboard says New Zealand is still in it. And here they are bringing the ball out now. In the wide world of sports, you're watching Australia versus New Zealand in the final of the Rugby League Four Nations. Tomorrow... You'll see the final day of the JB Weir Masters live from the Victoria Golf Club Up in Melbourne. Now. Brilliant telecasting over the last three days that'll culminate tomorrow. Tough stuff there from Paul Gallen coming in, blindsiding Frank Paul Newasala in there. And they backed it up again on Simon Mannering. Leroy Lars low. Got some help from Nate Miles a bit higher up. He's got a little cut above his right eye. Miles that happened with a head clash when he tackled Lulawa, who then went on to play the ball badly. And that ball has found the line just outside the 40. And, and again, I don't want to keep harping, harping on about the little things, but now that was a great kick, but it could have been a kick that actually got them possession if he'd have just positioned himself. This is the big defense from Australia, it started off with Gallon, and then Leroy Lars and Nate Miles. And then the kick, he just got himself better positioned, like he's he's half a metre out. He had plenty of time. The play the ball was Let's on the 40, back. Peter. You know, they've, they've got to position themselves so that they do get themselves behind the 40 for that kick. And assistant coach next to Stephen Kearney is a former wonderful player, Tony Iroh. Sideline, Wally Lewis. Well, we've become used to seeing... Benji Marshall kicked for his side at the Tigers and also New Zealand in the past. I'm a little bit confused as to why he's not involved in the clearance kicks tonight. He seems to control the ball a hell of a lot better. And Nathan Fien, he's not all that used to doing it at club level. So perhaps we're seeing a little bit of a changing of the guard with who's going to control. Leroy Lars now. 
Just outside the 30 metre line, Miles ran a decoy, Cronk went over to Gallon, Gallon to the halfway, strong run by this lock forward. Plays more like a front rower than a lock, but he's, he's as tough as nails, that was a good run. I think Tim Seeds has done a terrific job with Paul Gallon, I might talk about it later. But you're 100% right, he's playing him like a front rower. So Cronk nails it down into the in goal. Sam Perrett brings it back 10 metres out from his line. He'll play it for Nathan. And Fiend gets it away for Ohio, who steps Tate. Taken by Lockett. Loses the ball. Australia get advantage through Tate. It was in tackle, so Ohio was entitled to jump on him. Leroy Glass. Oh! That's a tackle, and then he's come up with the ball, Smith, but he's ruled knock on. Jeremy Smith came in almost in a, a, a tripping. Yeah, I'm not sure about the, the, the tackle pen. Looked like one of those old Cumberland throws to me. Well, the, they're legal as long as you've got hold of the player as you come in. It's a thin line. Did his leg make contact before he actually grabbed the top of Leroy Lars? It, Ray, it's dangerous anyway. Old Ray Price used to come up with a few of those. He was an expert at it. Throw the hip in and pull you over the top. I'd be careful calling him old if I was you. He's still playing, isn't he? I think he is. Somewhere. Here's Perry. He is, and he's still belting blokes too. But no, he tried to tell him to calm it down, but it, it's, it's not in the maker, not in the nature. It's Kenny Dow. Now Marshall, and here is Neo Sala. He's got both socks down. <laughs> I'm still laughing at Jeremy Smith. That's a black bandage that he's got or taping uh, on that uh, leg of his yeah. not a sock Isaac Luke is out there now he's got the ball at dummy half and finds a higher and Luke came into the game last week one, the Australians had shot away and the Kiwis are well in the contest and, and he's a he's a great attribute attribute as Benji Marshall he gets a fairly dusty type kick up Lonnie to Kiri Jagles and takes no he must have knocked it into the New Zealand player Wow, he's ruled a knock-on against the Australian. I'm not even sure it's a ball he needed to play at. It, it was a high kick from Benji Marshall, but there was no danger to it. The only way New Zealand were going to get a result was if Takiri knocked it on. It's a bit of a tough call. I think he ruled that the ball touched Jason Nightingale. Nightingale but I'm, I'm not so sure. Anyway, it gives New Zealand... A great opportunity. Up until now, they haven't looked like scoring a try. Australia's defence has been brilliant. Other than that one little play I highlighted before, where Adam Blair should have passed the ball out the back. Let's see if they can reproduce that scenario again. So it's 6 0 in favour of Australia. And here is Marshall. And Marshall got a ball away from Mandering, who was almost in a hole. And Tate it was that closed it yet again. Eight from the line. It's gone from Kenny. Oh, New Asala drops the ball. Zero, Jeremy. Well, they're building yeah, their they're own Isaac. problem. I got it. No, it's not. Go away. I was just about to Isaac. make a comment. 6 0 down. It's not a bad effort. 30 minutes gone. And really, if you watch our replays, there should never have been a try scored. It was more than a leg call, mate. Because the touch just didn't see a foot on the line for Brett Morris. Yeah, they feel as though they're in the contest the here in New Zealand, but, but that's sloppy. The There's still a lot of elements to their game they could improve. They're, they're, they're not out of this yet by any stretch. He nearly opened them up the play before Benji Marsh with a really good bit of deception. He, he went at the inside man and then went at the outside man who got interested enough defensively to just about open up the Simon Mannering. Not an easy play, but Marshall nearly pulled it off as thigh day gets pushed back. What's the story with, with Luke Lewis, Andrew Johns? Yeah, it's a syndesmosis injury to a, the lower leg. It's, it, there's no break at this stage, so he won't be back, Luke Lewis. Miles playing the ball near the halfway line. Not to mention that Andrew's on that sideline with Wally tonight. My apologies, Joseph. We used to call it a sprained ankle. What was it again? A syndemosis or something or other? Yeah, it, it's it's the ligament that sits between both bones. Yeah, we, we just, just finished with a degree, Gus. Yeah, we just called it a sprained ankle in the old days. Here's Tate! Tackled on the 30-metre line. Thigh days limping. 
Yeah, not for the first time tonight. So it's gone from Cameron Smith, and now it's with Tom Leroy Lars. Hunches over, finds Cameron Smith, tackled by Eastwood and Smith. And then another drives in underneath. And again, all the Australians to the left were expecting Cameron Smith to kick. It comes one later from Cooper Clark. It's a touch deep. One arch man, beautifully. And Perrett it is that takes it and comes down in the field of play. It was a fairly good effort by Perrett. Copped a bit of bagging for his performance last weekend, and I felt so sorry for him because he's he's a quality winger. Yeah, well, he's playing out of position. He's played all year on the right, and it's not easy to change sides of the field in this day and age, and particularly when you're playing against the best in the world. So he looks far more comfortable tonight. Gus, that's about the third time tonight we've seen chases go through and the kick hasn't come. Is that the, the kicker missing the assignment or, or the outside men seeing something the kicker's not seeing? Well, there's something in the calls because, as you say, that, that's the third time that either Lockyer or Cameron Smith, well, they haven't even looked to kick, yet the chasers have headed off after the ball. So back on the 20-metre line, Slater using Morris. He's playing his 33rd game of the year in this match. Second highest... Benji Marshall has played the most football this year. He's playing his 34th. Not a bad effort for a youngster who we might have thought was injury prone or just unlucky. Gallon puts it down, talking of luck. So it might be that the pendulum is starting to swing a little bit the other way now. Yeah, big eight minutes coming up. I mean, New Zealand have done remarkably well to keep themselves in the contest for mine. They can either capitalise on that or they can blow it all away by conceding more points. This is another great opportunity for them to dominate the last little period of play. They should be thinking about just setting up camp down Australia's end of the field now. If they don't score, keep putting it into the end goal to get the restart. Keep Australia under pressure. Your best defence is to have the ball at the other end of the field. Despite some limping from Sam Friday, it is Tom Leroy Lars who has just left the field with David Shillington back out for his second stint. Step from Kenny Dow does not beat his man in Tommy. Nightingale acting half and he doesn't. Andrew Johns passes the ball to himself and fooled nobody. There was nobody within a country mile of him when he did, but that's that's uh, Jason. He obviously thought about that while he's having his muesli this morning. He thought, I'll, I'll try one of them little dummies. That's it. Fiend behind one, finding Marshall, and here is Marshall. 18 metres out. Marshall, every time he gets involved, it's good. Here he is with the ball on the hurdy-gurdy. And he's put down three metres out, five tackles. Fiend, oh, high up. He goes across to Kiri under pressure. Up they go, down they come. Came off New Zealand for mine. And for Tony Archer. Nightingale came off him. Nice set of six there from New Zealand. Little change of angles. They prized open the Australian defence, threatened to get into the backfield. Australia scrambled well. That's the key. Get some attacking possession and get Australia tired. Oh get them stretching in defence. Telecast going through Prime and Sky Sports over in New Zealand and over in the United Kingdom going through BBC Sport and Sky Sports. And uh, Tate has picked up and put down hard. He's put plenty out there, but he's taken some as well. Now Lockyer's charged down. Greg Eastwood has got the ball. Eastwood goes to ground, looks around for help. Oh, terribly unlucky that he didn't get a decent bounce. It was rolling sideways instead of up for him as Bronson Harrison takes it in behind to play the ball. Harrison... On the second tackle, just in front of the half-time break, and here's the big fella that charged down and almost was able to create something. Eastwood played, Luke, now Marshall, dummy, dummy, give, and it's gone to feed. Feed away to Mannering, Mannering for the line. Big, strong, held up, forced back a metre out. Simon Mannering, fourth tackle for the NZers. It's gone away from Fien. It hits Ohio. It's gone. He's gone inside the 20, and has tackled 15 away. 
So what will they do with this one? It's with Marshall. Oh, forward pass to Kenny Dow. They're not going to call it. Kenny Dow scores a try. Wow. Kenny Dow scores for the Kiwis. Well, I might be wrong, but I thought Marshall's pass was forward off the hands. 6-4, the score doesn't matter what I think. Well, let's, 36 gone. Let's hope it wasn't, Brad, because it was a great play. To stand and hold and hold it up and hold it up, now it's forward. It's forward, even with the fact he was getting hit backwards as he passed. I'm sure that it's left forward, but the New Zealanders will say, well, the first try for Australia shouldn't have been as well. That's right, it's tit for tat, Pete. People watching, I should point out, Peter made the reference earlier. Some of you people might know the rugby league rules brilliantly, but you can't throw the ball forward. You cannot throw the ball forward. Um, Kenny Dow, the centre of the year internationally, plays for the Roosters in Sydney. He's got the try. Sean Kenny Dow. Sixth career try, and hasn't he blossomed? New Zealand's Rugby League Player of the Year. Now the captain, his 11th captaincy. And a ball that went forward. But at the same time, the points are on the board. And Marshall kicking at 80%. Raises the flags, game on. It was a beautiful play, an old-fashioned play. We used to use this in the old days. Inside man runs wide, second man comes close. Watch how the player veers out, Bronson Harrison, and Kenny Dow runs into the hole. Now, unfortunately, the ball goes about a metre forward, but the execution other than that was wonderful, how it prized open. See how Willie Tonga went with Bronson Harrison, and his centre opponent came from outside in to hit the hole. Beautifully... Well, you can't say beautifully executed because it was a forward pass, but it's a lovely play. We used to use that in the old days, Rabbits. They still work. That's when you were coaching? Yeah. I was going to say, you've got to distinguish whether you're talking about coaching or playing because I never saw you involved in that play. No, it was too fast for me. Exactly right. That's the point I was trying to make with some politeness. This is Manu. You might have taught it, but you didn't execute it. Here's Eastwood. Certainly wouldn't have run onto it. <laughs> so now it's with Adam Blair. Well, this is this is most interesting. Six all. They've been threatening to come back. Now they kick from their own 40. Big, big kick from Benji. It'll go dead. I, I've got to say, I was about to make a comment, maybe 10 back. Benji's got to get more involved. It's more about Nathan Fien than Benji Marshall. Now he's starting to get involved, and they're pressing the button. Yep. Well, they've kept themselves in it. I said in the preview, the key to Australia is that they blow sides away early in these big games. And by hook or by crook, you've just got to keep yourself in touch on the scoreboard. Then the middle part of the game isn't so bad. And New Zealand have done that. They've kept themselves in it, now find themselves level. And if they can just last out this, this last minute, it's a, it's a great first 40 minutes for them. Lockyer setting it up on the blind side. And he gets the ball and crosses halfway. Fiday can't get the glue on it. It'll be a scrum. New Zealand will have the loose head and feed a couple of metres their side of halfway, but it might not even... Yes, they've decided to pack a scrum, the Kiwis. They say, we've got 30 seconds, let's use it. Yeah, and Benji Marshall with a couple of long-range field goals this year was yelling at them to pack the scrum. He'll be thinking to hit a couple up and maybe just get his right foot to the ball and try and take a 7-6 lead into the half-time break. Now, that would get his, his side's heart really pumping. They've done well, New Zealand. They've still got the same mistakes in their game that they had last week, but there is obviously a fiercer attitude in defence. Here they go. And Mannering is taken in the middle of the ground. Marshall, he's kicked field goals from the halfway. 20 seconds to go, bit of niggle in the tackle, Greg Bird is out there, involved, Isaac gets it, 38 away, here he goes, and Benji's ready to the right, he gets the ball, he hits it, but it's a charge down, came off and 
and meant to see. Fiend of Ohio. He puts a kick off the leading edge of the boot. Taken by Slater. Slater is uh, trapped in the, amongst the New Zealand defenders. And so there it is, the first half of a most interesting. Still the jostle goes on. Still the jostle goes on. Blair has thrown one. Shillington replies with a lift. Then they come in from all over the place. I can see Manu throwing punches. And so what an ending. An eruption, you might say. The volcano's gone off. Yeah, you can't turn away for a moment, can you? We, we heard the siren and the whistle. We thought, well, that's it. I don't think the referee is going to allow them all to move the field just yet. He's screaming at players to come back. It's not over yet. The two captains are back. All the other players are heading to the dressing room. Well, Tony Archer. And I want David Shillington, mate. He had to. He had to do this. It's all right, mate. I, I, I've been telling you right through the call. There's been a lot of niggle in the tackles. Little petty stuff allowed to go. It's boiled over. Right, there's been nothing in the first half, just listen to it. You don't want to take that in, right? You've got 10 minutes to settle them down. Keep them calm, right? They come out with that attitude again, I'll start sitting blokes down, right? So that's it. We're going in here, but you keep the blokes calm, okay? Yeah. Same for you, Benji. Let's go, boys. Well, it's not the first time I've seen a little bit of a brawl in an Australian New Zealand test match at this very place when it was called Lang Park. But they go back to the neutral corner. They'll take a break when we come back. Sterlo and the boys will take us through their thoughts and the highlights from the first half. Well, I asked the question, I think it was during the Papua New Guinea game, and has there been an unlucky footballer? And Brent Tate is out of this game. He might be out of the game completely as Marshall restarts, and this is Scott bringing it back, and he'll play the ball on the 20-metre line. Come on, Adam He's had a brilliant start to the game. The new front row forward. 15 minutes of quality stuff. Here's Nate Miles with a good offload for Greg Bird. Oh, he's looking for Willie really Tonga, Peter. And obviously that injury to Brent Tate has a, a huge impact on the next 40 minutes with Luke Lewis out of the game as well, you would believe. It's very rare that you see a player on crutches consoling another player. But that is what we saw at the break as the Australians get the first penalty, second half. And Kurt Gidley, of course, has gone into the centres. There's Lewis. They were amazing pitches, weren't they, with the distraught Brent Tate. You know, a, a look behind the scenes that fans don't see that side of the players very often. We're in the game. I've lived with that over the years. You see all sorts of hot, great highs in the game, but there are other disappointments as well. Kurt Gidley looks as though he's moved to the centres. Now, I would imagine he was going to come into the game at dummy half at some stage. That plan goes out the window. Cameron Smith will have to go the distance. So, David Shillington... Playing the ball inside the 30-metre line, Australia and New Zealand at six all. Two dubious tries given by the officials. But at least the scales of justice have taken us to that situation. Six all. And Shillington sideways. Three. Taken down by Eastwood at the end of it all. Yusala in it, his lock here, turning it in. Bird. Really putting himself into this passage of play. He's a dummy from the dummy half, and then he backs over the top of Isaac Luke, Cameron Smith, that is. And eventually he gets rid of Isaac Luke with a bit of a shove. Bird puts in a kick, Bird puts in another kick, and it's forced by New Zealand. I said Bird was putting himself into this passage of play. He has dominated since the, the halftime break. He's had a heap of handles. And in this case, he has a heap of kicks. And eventually, he gets a line dropout coming back to him. There was a flip over there with Cameron Smith. Could have been nasty, but he did really well there, Greg Bird. There was a player laying in the play of the ball. They were all over him. It was fifth tackle. A lot of pressure. Stay behind. Showed his experience and just calmly kicked the ball into the end goal and then hustled in to make the tackle. That, that injury to Brent Tate, it looks to me like it's been a fairly emotional time at halftime for the Australians. They've come out fired up. Shillington playing the ball on the Kiwis 30 metre line towards the western side. And here's Bird again. 
He'll play the ball only 17 meters out from the line. Cameron Smith turns it back to Scott. Scott's able to get away from Luke, and he's looking to unload. He has unloaded the ball and on the ground. Knock on. Scrum New Zealand's feed. Now, this is interesting. He said knock on. He said Scott was trying to pass the ball. Are we going short, James? He did have his back to the opponent's goal line, looking to force it out. Let's have a look here. He tries to pass it out the back. Yeah, that's a knock on. He's dropped it to the ground. Coach and his apprentice there, not happy. Plenty of heat in the game. As we went to the halftime break. Now they lock into the scrum. And it's really locked in there by the Kiwi forwards. Hoping they might have even got a penalty out of that. For one of the other forwards from Australia breaking early. Manu, he's lost the ball, but it's a penalty. He's ruled a rake. Two in the tackle. And the ball stolen. So that brings them out of a dangerous situation quite comfortably. Gee, he didn't have much control on that ball, did he? The New Zealander. He might have been a bit lucky to get the penalty. So Isaac Luke on the halfway line. Nathan Feen turning it back on the inside for Manu. And Sika to play the ball. Start of a new set for New Zealand. And they go into enemy territory through New Asala Strong. Eastwood puts it down. Tonga comes up with it for Australia. Yeah. No advantage there, boys. It's so unnecessary. No advantage. Scrum up there. They've got good field position. It was a good run from New Asala. He was going to pass that at all costs, but you just got to take the tackle and, and take advantage of what you've done with the charge. Greg Eastwood probably should have caught it, but I just don't think it's it's needed. In Cameron. They were in lovely field position to use a few tackles to put Marshall into that danger zone. 40 metres out from their own line, Australia, and Slater rounded up by New Asala. And I'm with you, Ray. I think that is exactly the New Zealand forward's job, is to just concentrate on getting Benji Marshall into an attacking position and Isaac Lee. Just get him down there and let them do the job. So here's David Shillington getting the ball back for Nate Miles. And 33 metres out from the New Zealand line. Smith, the pass finding Cron. Cron getting the ball away. Bird involved. Slater lost the ball, went back, taken by Smith. Gets it back for Takiri. Australia really playing razzle-dazzle football on this occasion. And Takiri will play the ball. 17 away from the line. It's gone to the middle of the ground, to the right foot of Cooper Crump. And a bit of pressure over there for Perrin. Oh, magic take. Morris was flying through the air. That's a wonderful take. Absolutely wonderful. Reaches up with his hands outstretched. Look at that for a grab. Brilliant. Yeah, good on you, Sam Perrin. He had a tough week last week. It mentioned that Brett Morris did give him some sort of bath and tonight he's, he's answered the call he's bounced back like good players do as kenny dow picks up good meters quick play the ball isaac luke skips out leach lockyer still going just inside the 40 meter line south sydney hooker plays the ball marshall now tries to open up a gap and he does he's gone through marshall he puts a kick in Racing back is Gidley. The ball on the ground has gone into touch off whom? Well, you can't take your eyes off him for one moment. And, and Australia have got to be careful. The really great players, if you rush them, sometimes you make them run. And on fifth tackle, they make Benji Marshall run. Didn't come up the other side of the play the ball. And he sprints into the backfield, put a perfectly placed kick in. And Kurt Gidley gets back and the ball rolls into touch with no one touching it. So... Marshall was the last one, but he wanted to kick on tackle five. They made him run. He nearly made them pay. He's the best player in the game, in my book. And as Peter was just saying, or concurring, take him down into the, the danger zone. He'll win the game for you. 
But you've got to take him down there to give him every chance. And I told you earlier, he's playing his 34th game. This is the player that's played most football this year, Benji Marshall. Is Australia now just outside the 20-meter line with Nate Miles just outside 30. Playing it in the Bundaberg sign. And now it goes to Scott. And Matty Scott played the ball almost on halfway. He's been terrific, hasn't he? And Cameron Smith is able to slither under a tackle. Eventually, it's Manu who closes him down. His Kronk. He had to hurry the kick, but it's still a high. What a hang time. Nightingale! Right up above them. The Dragons winger. Now Ho higher. Well, it's inspirational from the two wingers. Their last two tackle five diffusions, Sam Perrett and Nightingale have been brilliant. And that just inspires the rest of the team. Here he goes. Here he is, Nightingale. Perrett just a couple of minutes ago. Nightingale now. And then since that, you've seen Marshall again injecting himself. And every time he does, the red lights go on. Now it is with Nior Sala. And he'll play the ball near halfway. Wrestled over onto his back by Smith and Miles. Played by Frank. Now it's gone on to Nathan Fiend's boot. Drives it down. It's back spinning. Slater. Close to the sideline, coming to the centre. Brett Morris is there, but he's tidied up by Luke. With Mannering and assist in the tackle. Now for Gidley. And not held on the 20. Pinches another metre. And the 15, Matalino about to come back in. Is Lottie Takiri. Well, that's good stuff from both Gidley and Takiri because the Australians were on the back foot after that kick as well. Slow play the ball, 5-8. He gets going as quickly as he can, just short of his own 40. Sam playing it, Cameron. Darren puts a kick in. He's gone down for Nightingale. He's not going to take any chances. Takes it early, sprints 15, sprints 20. Good effort from the winger. He wasn't prepared to take, take any chances with that ball finding the dead ball line. And here's Ohio bouncing away from Gidley. Mannering comes away from the Eastern touchline. He'll play it inside 40. Played back for Ohio to use Perrett now. And Perrett looks at the halfway line before being tackled. He plays it sloppily. Ohio, Fien, now it's Kenny Dow. Bouncing away from a couple of the forwards. And eventually he's put down. Nine metres on Australia's side of halfway. The final of the Four Nations. And Isaac Luke throws a dummy. Almost gets through. Kenny Dow's there, but late. 25 out from the line. The Kiwis looking strong. It's gone to Feen. It's gone on to Navalino. They might have a number or two on that side, but the pass is bad. Perrett put a kick in it. And Slater, Slater lets it go. Well, excitement. Well, it found the wrong man in Ben Navalino. Excuse the pun, but this is a huge test for the Australians tonight. 17 versus 15. The Kiwis are growing in confidence, and Isaac Luke making space up the middle. This was the last tackle, and Madalino short behind Simon Mannering. Did a good job, Sam Perrett, to possibly keep it alive, as the Australians do with Shillington. It looked like a kickboxer out there, Sam Perrett. The kick he put on it just went dead, doing Billy Slater a favour. While Peter was talking, you would have seen Isaac Luke put a shoulder on Matt Scott. Another example of these little fellows that they play miles above their weight sometimes. Chris Sando comes to mind. Don't mind dishing it out. Now comes from Lockyer. Sloppy. Back for Smith. He's made to pay the penalty by McHenry. Right in the middle of the ground. And here is Shillington. And David play the ball. Off comes Matt Scott. Ball goes back for the kick from Croc. Dummies, dummies, kicks, chips. And it's for himself. It's for himself. He puts another kick on it. Oh, ho higher. He might have made a mistake early. But that was good work. It could have been disastrous, couldn't it? Cooper Croc asked the question. And Lance Ohio had to come up with a grab. And just managed to stick. Nathan Feed. Now Ben Medellino. And he's tackled 35 metres away. 
From his own line, we're locked up at six all. It's a scoreboard that reflects a heavy ground, but no, we're playing on top of the ground. And it's fast and furious. As it comes away from Ohio, the Marshall march along. Bronson Harrison gives the ball. Kenny Dowell almost slipping through. Ball goes back, Archer will say play on. And it'll be Nightingale playing it for Marshall. And uh, he goes on to the boot on the last for Ho Hyatt to kick. And underneath it, Gidley, he said, play on. And a good tackle by Simon Manring. Only five into the field of play. Morris has tackled 12 away from his own line. Taken down by Fiend. Dragon on dragon by Dave on the 20 metre line. He played the ball back for Cameron Smith. And now he finds Nate Miles. They upend him and put him away. McHenry puts his weight into it with Isaac Luke, the main tackler. Smith behind the decoy for Leroy Lars. Well, everything I've ever seen in my life in football suggests that this game, something's got to give. They can't keep running and tackling like this. And the scores say it's 6 all. There is going to be a break very shortly because both sides are really starting to hurt. So the back three try to combine for the Kiwis. Nightingale plays at a higher dummy half, and here's a run from Perrin. Well, there's no doubt New Zealand look more dangerous at the moment, but one of the great qualities of Australia over many years is to conjure up something when they're on their heels. And they are to some degree at the moment. A flash of brilliance, support play, just something. And who's the chief conjurer? None other than Darren Lockyer. How many times has he put one over the line to win a big match? Isaac Luke's come to the sideline for New Zealand. I think that's a mistake. Here's a big bonus for them with a penalty late in the tackle count. I thought Isaac Luke was looking very, very dangerous. He didn't look tired to me. And with so many tired players out there, this last 15 minutes has been so frantic. Isaac Luke is a type of player you want out there. I can't believe he's off. He's, he's looked so ominous. He's, he's played 80 minutes just about every week for South Sydney this year, and, and you could see what a, a great year he had. They're on the verge of something here, the Kiwis. I think that they've just put, put a pin in the balloon, possibly. So Lulawai is back out there as a second ball finds the field, and Matalino takes it up. 22 metres out from the line. He lost that ball. Oh dear. Well, how many times have they gifted the ball back to Australia in this situation? Yeah, and they've got to be really careful here. Look how the Australians are pumping each other up. Now, that's their, that's their origin experience kicking in. They know that they can, they can turn this mistake into something special. New Zealand, on the other hand, have got to dig in and say, OK, disappointment, setback. We've just got to get our minds on our defence here and make sure it doesn't hurt us. Look for Australia to try and take advantage here. Something's going to give, Rabbits. Can you feel it? Can you feel it, baby? I can feel it. I'll tell you something else. I'm enjoying it, too. And Oh, a high tackle from Jeremy Smith. Rather than McHenry, I think. Yeah. And, and this compounds the problem. Mataluno drops it in the play of the ball, and then on first tackle, they give the penalty. So Australia have had a let off and now a bonus in the space of 30 seconds. And it is so like them to turn this into important points. That was just a lazy grab. The Australia just sucking in the energy here. They'll be thinking to themselves, now's the time. Yeah, this game now, it's as much mental as it is physical. I know they're, they're ripping into each other. But the next points in this game are unbelievably crucial. Tension mounting. As Australia get a chance, and Leroy Lars, he rang into a brick wall defence from oh, Madalino and McKendry. Oh, He'll play it on the 40 metre line then. Cameron Smith for Cooper Cronk. He dummies, dummies again. Goes out the back, fights Slater, Slater. They put him down, 20 away from the line. Here they come, Rabbits. The Kangaroos at six all with the Kiwis. And here's Gallon back into the goal. Bird got the ball to Slater. Step, step, Slater. Scored try 16 at test level. You can feel it. You can feel it coming. 
parry and thrust, belt and get belted. Suddenly, Australia turn the screws when the advantage falls their way. You can feel it coming. And I spoke about the mental. You could see the, the joy from the Australians at the mistake at the other end of the field and their reaction to this try. They know what a big play this is in the overall contest. Good line running there from Greg Bird and Billy Slaty, a nutmark man on his outside. But he stepped, scored himself. He's a wonderful player, Billy Slater. Just a wonderful player, a thrilling player. As I said in a commentary the other day, he's the most exciting number one I've seen, as well as being the busiest. So, will it be 12 6? Can they come back? Telecast going right around the globe through many networks. A particular warm welcome to our audiences in New Zealand and in England and in Papua New Guinea. I know the match is also going through Fiji. They'd be disappointed that Petro is not in the game, but that was a mark or a stamp of the man what he did. Cameron Smith. 25 out, 5 in from the western line. To the Caxton Street end, and oh, yes, he's got it! Yes, he's got it! It is 12-6, Wally Lewis. Magnificent kick from Cameron Smith. 60 minutes of play there, 6 in front. Just have a look at the replay. Very well constructed try by the Australians. Terrific angling back inside from Greg Bird. And Billy Slater, well, if you can back him off that left foot step, that's going to make the Australians feel a bit better. And Brent Tate as well. There's the conversion. We, Andrew Johns and I had the opportunity to just drop in and have a look at Tatey. Well, he's all in tears at the moment. He believes that could well be the end of his career. Well, that's a, a terrible thing. I mean, it's a terrible thing for anybody to stare retirement forced retirement in the face but when you've had as many injuries and come back as he has he doesn't deserve any any more bad luck no we wish him the best he won't rush into a decision of course and let's hope the cold light of day that it, it may not be as serious as what it first appears and that will lift him i'm sure that he's watching this last 20 minutes and the australians now looking to continue on Cooper Cronk drives it down. Sam Perrick spring in the step of the green and gold at the moment. Is Lance Ho higher? Oh, picked up and bundled down. It's pretty hard to get down to, actually, but Greg Bird nailed him. And here is Sam Perrick, another little small back three. Just bunching up now, New Zealand, under the pressure. They're now six behind. It doesn't feel as comfortable for them. They just bunched in behind the play of the ball. Big hit there by Greg Bird, backing up the fact that his team's now in front. Australia look to turn the screws. This is Kenny Dow. Losing the ball. Losing the ball, and they continue to mount pressure on themselves. I love watching players. You, could, you can watch a game and not know the scoreline, and from the body language of the players, know who is on top at any particular moment. Phil spoke about them bunching. The body language wasn't good when they bunched as well. Australia on the back of points. They've now got the smell in the nostrils. Psychologically, they're well on top. And New Zealand, it's tough to dig deep under pressure, but that's what they've got to do. This is the elite level. It's the origin experience, Peter. I made this point last week. You know, the Australians are so lucky that they have that great origin competition where they can go to this level and push themselves to such extremes and come out the other side. And, you know, this side is full of Queenslanders that have dominated for five years. New Zealand players don't get that. You know, some of them get to play in grand finals, but that origin experience is so valuable to Australia and so valuable to these players in big games. So Australia winning the scrum and met by the three-quarter line made up of forwards for New Zealand. So Leroy Lars playing the ball, pass from Dunny Half to Thaiday. 
right on the line. Jeremy Smith hurt himself trying to tackle Fiday. Fiday and Fina having a dust up in back play. Now it's gone away and it's with Greg Bird. Ball loose. Slater dives on it. Should be more. It is. It's been negated. Plays the ball. And here it goes with Gallon. Gallon pulled down by Nightingale. Plays the ball nine away. Cameron Smith, Cooper Cronk outside, inside. And it's with Greg Bird. Wonderful second half for Greg. Now it's gone from Cameron Smith away to Cooper Cronk. Genuflecting as he took the ball. Now it's gone from Lockyer. It's just down Friday lifting the legs and getting away from one. We play the ball, eight out. Lockyer dummy half. Gridley was smashed there by a flying tackle from McHenry. But he comes back the Newcastle skipper. And he'll play the ball, 10 away from the line. Played back to Bird, high ball, not good for Tonga. Short for Lotte, but it's in the touch. It's good work by New Zealand. They were stretched there, but they've scrambled well. Australia way on top at the moment. New Zealand have got to learn to dig in here, and even though their opponents have got all the running, if they don't concede any more points, they, they give Benji Marshall a chance to get them back level on the scoreboard. But at the moment, they're just running on empty. Look, hands on hips, hands on heads. People leaning over and look at them. The, bo the body language is awful there. You've got to be up and talking and pushing each other. I want to give Sam Friday a big grab there. Sh showed great restraint. About third tackle on the far side of the field. He came to grips with Nathan Feen. And Nathan Feen landed two on his chin. Watch this. It'll continue on. There'll be, there's one there. There's another one there. Now, normally... Sam can react to that, but he knew that his side was in front and knew the worst thing that could happen was to disrupt what was going on. So he copped it for his team and ran away from it. Great camera work. Well done, boys. Play by Mannery. And here's Sam Perrin. He pulled him down. He started to crawl up the ground. And he plays the ball. Now Jeremy Smith's not happy with Greg Bird. They wrestle on the ground. Marshall's with the ball. Kronk is with him. Now they pile into this melee. Well, this could be the biggest decision in the game. Well, Greg Bird clips Jeremy Smith as he goes past. But Jeremy Smith gets up off the ground and chases him. Th this will be very, very interesting how they interpret the this. What Greg Bird was away. fairly hey, innocuous for mine. Hey, hey, hey. Smith's reaction away. over the Jeremy's top. Whoever gets this penalty may well go on to win the game. Because it's so important which way this goes. Well, this is in direct contrast to what we just saw from Sam Friday. There's the tackle being made, and there's the two th of the 13. Jeremy Smith pushed to the ground by Greg Bird. Well, you know, again, there's not much in it. There's nothing in it when your team's got the football. Yeah. Oh, I don't think what Greg Bird did to him was all that bad. He thought he was going to get the ball and sort of hit him from behind, and Jeremy Smith got up and chased after him. Nathan, can you go back there? Well, if you had a blue every time somebody got pushed in the back, we'd be broadcasting the fights. Well, you and I'd be fighting all night. Yeah, We've been nice to each other, Jeremy. Night, haven't we? It's been good the last night. I know. Well, here we go. This will be interesting from Tony Archer. We'll stay with Tony. Granted, he pushed you first. Yeah. Don't get break me off. Hey, listen to me. Don't get up and react. That's what causes the Almost breaks his neck. Push him in the back. Benji, Benji. You get up and do something like that, he ends up sitting down. It's just silly stuff. You're going to get the penalty. You're going to get the penalty. It goes against you first. Don't react, right? Yeah. Benji Marshall was talking that right up. He knows this is an important penalty. Well, you know, Tony Archer's gone to the rule book and yes. probably gone very he comes fine. In. You know. The player hey, not in possession, you can't take him we out. That. I mean, I know it's hey, your rule book. Push him. He don't punch up, so it doesn't start. Well, I'm contact sport, man. Yeah, I know that, but you can't go around just pushing blokes out there who don't have the ball. It's a penalty to New Zealand. There he is. He's just telling you. He's telling you about the rule book, Tony Archer. Yeah. The uh, Phil, Phil's rule book is totally in opposition to that, but that's fine. Yeah. That's fine. We we'll, we'll run with Archer's rule book for the time being. Yeah, and I'm I'm happy for New Zealand to get the penalty, but um, you know, as Greg Bird just said, it's it's a contact sport. Yep. It's actually a collision sport. Yep. Understand all that. We're not going there again. Not tonight. Anymore. Time getting away now. We made him contest at 65 minutes. McKendry inside the 30. He's been good tonight, Sam. It's a hell of a leap that he's made in rugby league in the last 12 months or so. Now Greg Eastwood, can he pull something out? 
He's the sort of player that he can just about do anything. He's a big forward, but he's also clever. Marshall using Harrison. Talking of cleverness, this fellow is good. Harrison, he's 11 away from the... Oh, he loses the ball, getting out. It's a penalty to the Kiwis. It's against Cameron Smith. Well, that's the bonus. That they need to turn this into points now. Said, wait on that road. Because that's a bonus. Oh, the Australians giving the Kiwis a golden opportunity. That's McHenry. Gallon working on the head. The ball goes down. It's a, another penalty. Gallon's put the knee in. Not in a foul manner, but simply to discomfort McHenry in his attempt to get up and play the ball. So again, we start on one, and that again oh, is McKendry. Clear the rack! I'm going to give it to someone else, because that's right. <laughs> He's out in his feet, McKendry. <laughs> Lulalai, it's gone away from Smith to Eastwood. He's lost the ball. Yep. Australia yeah. get the advantage. Yeah. Eight out from their line. Gidley's got it. Now, it is with Miles. Oh, now trying to labour the point, they just don't get to that that stage where they can bring the main act into play. Is Tonga 35 away from the line? And again, for me, that's the origin experience. That's that's being part of a smart team that can go to the wall and come out the other side. And Australians, these players have done it so often at this level. New Zealand just haven't quite got that yet. So it's with Gallon, and he's swamped over the top by Harrison. We're on the halfway line. Smith for Cronk. Cronk puts a kick down towards Ohio. It might go dead. Yes, it will. So we'll come back to the 20. The Kiwis will relish this. So we saw it from New Asala early. We saw it there from Eastwood. You know, forwards just half through and a low percentage play trying to pass the ball. You know, when their job is to get into field position and as you say, bring the main act into play. It's not up to them to win it. It's up to them to get them into position to win. Nightingale. This is watching the Kiwi forwards getting back behind the 20-meter line. Several of them. Now, I think I used the word relish. They were reveling in the in the little, little spell that they were given. And here they are getting Isaac ready to come back into the game. And here's Blair, who played the ball five meters into Australia's half of play it's 12 6 the kangaroos looking to hold the trophy eastwood will play it 40 meters out tackled by cameron smith lula white to fiend fiend gets it rolling it'll go down to that dead ball line it might ask the question it does it's asked the question of slater they'll pick him up and put him back good big defense play. new zealand yeah big play there got an unfavorable bounce did billy slater as the, the fans in the, the crowd for the Kiwis realise that that could be one of the big plays if they can capitalise. Good kick from Nathan Fiend, bad bounce for Billy Slater, good chase from the black jerseys. All right. Well, all the pressure's on one man, isn't it? I mean, it, because you're great, you live with that expectation, and that's what Benji Marshall has to live with, and he's become a more accomplished Kevin, player Kevin, in his right. ability to deal with it. But all of New Zealand is now looking to their number six. He's got to come up with something and do it now. Smith with the line drop out. And uh, a good kick it was. Here's Blair. Taken by Shillington. After the initial tackle was made by Nate Miles. Now, Marshall gives it to Eastwood. And waits on the blind side, does Marshall. Isaac Luke goes to him now, then he goes to Harrison. Harrison sees the sideline, gets the ball away in time. Kenny Dale has it, and is told by Archer to play the ball. The Nightingale at acting half, and it's gone infield to Marshall, across the ground, dummy, dummy, give. Lula White, now it's with Fiend. Fiend tries to baffle Gidley, got the ball back to Ohio. Ohio then comes back. And then he gives the ball to Jeremy Smith. Somebody had to go forward. Jeremy did that. Isaac goes in, looks for a hole, gets the ball away to Nathan Fiend. 
And it'll be played nine metres out from the line. By Nathan Feed. Here's Luluai. On to Hohaya. Back to Marshall. A juggle. He grubber kicks in for Magic Gale. Oh, he's a genius. The Dragons have scored. The Dragon winger Magic Gale. Off a kick right from Marshall. He's well, a genius. They're going upstairs to make sure that... Jason Nightingale is on site. They're looking to get home on the little men. New Zealand, they're all out there. They've left them there. Nathan Fien, Hohaya, Benji Marshall, Lulawai, Isaac Luke. And Benji, he's come up with the surprise play here. The Australians not expecting this. They've got up quickly. And that's why he kicked, because they were up so quickly off their line. Lottie Takiri, 15 metres off his own line. Big man to turn and chase. And Nightingale sneaks in behind. That, that is brilliant. You know... I was just talking about living with expectation. And Benji Marshall would know that unless it comes from him, it's not going to happen. The rest of his teammates know. Unless it comes from him, it won't happen. Well, it's got to come from him again with a conversion. So the try is there. The kick is still to come. Marshall has provided the absolute spot-on kick for Jason Nightingale from the St George Illawarra Premiers. Well, there's the try scorer, Jason Nightingale. He's a very good player, grossly underrated. He's a real workman. And uh, it was a touch of irony that the West Tigers and the Dragons would combine to bring it to 12-10, Marshall and Nightingale. Well, he got this ball down pretty quickly on the mark, but he's taken his time as he comes back. Enormous pressure on the shoulders of this young man. The New Zealand captain, Benji Marshall, hits it, hits it high, hits the uprights, bounces back into the field to play no goal. Andrew John sideline. Oh, Rabs, that didn't go to script. But when the big play needed to be done, the young champion from New Zealand stood up. Have a look at this. Didn't know what he's going to do. Eyes up. Seen Lottie Dekiri there. Look at the shape of this ball. Look at the way it bends back towards Nightingale. That's freakish. He loves it, Benji. And look then this. this. Oh, that's so unfair. The framework got in the road. You cannot believe it. It's clipped the inside of the upright and come back. That two points so vital. Brilliant kick. Well, the good news for New Zealand is that there's still plenty of time in this game. Come A lot on. of football in eight minutes. Well, they've got to come 80 metres now. Get a few of those metres through Sam Perrett. Goal! Playing in front of a crowd of 36,299. Which I've got to say is quite disappointing from my point of view, given that the match is being played in Brisbane. This is Eastward. And the crowd figure, yeah, just, just over 36,000. Watching a wonderful game of football, peppered with mistakes, I understand that. But here's Marshall looking for a kick and a regather, but the bounce favours Slater, and Slater is banged down by Jeremy Smith who almost had a second go at him. Lockyer gets the ball away to Takiri. That was smart work by Jeremy Smith. Everyone else was going for the ball, and he just worked out that if Slater got it, he could run it back the distance the other way. So he set himself on the man rather than the ball. Gidley, wonderfully taken by Mannering. And here's Brett Morris, and he's driven down by Eastwood. The penalty is so important in these dying moments as Paul Gallon takes it, spins over halfway. Consecutive sets are gold. Last tackle now against the Australians. Lockyer, he'll kick deep. In fact, he kicks high. Coming and he leads the, the chase. Deep is Ohio. And 12 away, runs around Lockyer, taken around the ankles by Thiday. The Four Nations final is six minutes from the end. Three of these New Zealand forwards still haven't got back on side. They're really struggling out there where Australia are up on the line and... They're pressing forward in defence in numbers. Mannering plays this ball. Luke, he can rip your part. 
He's back out there, the will of the wisp. He'll play the ball on the halfway line. Kenny Dow picks it up off the ground, runs with it, takes it to the 40 meter line. A gain of 45 meters on the five tackles, then the kick from Marshall, very high down to Slater. Oh, Billy Slater's put it down. Wow. Billy Slater in the mouth of the goalpost has put it down. No way. I don't think he hit that ball as well as he would have liked. I think Marshall was looking for the big spiral kick and he didn't quite catch it and it went end over end. And Billy took it a little easy, thinking this one will be okay, and it just spun straight through his sweaty hands. Oh, look out. Well, he, it's hard to say he, he took it easy, but he certainly didn't get in a good position to take it. Normally, that time of kick, when you've got time, you turn your body sideways so that if you do lose it, you give it a chance of going backwards. But he was square to the kick. Right. Even though it went through his hands and down onto his knee. I, I, think he, I think he thought he was going to run the length and score a try. He just had that, that body language about him that I'm just going to catch this. I've got a heap of room to move. They're tired. He was thinking about his run. This is Billy a couple of years ago in the World Cup. Got pushed sideways and threw it back to Benji. Well, Billy will be having nightmares if this goes against them. Like a couple of years ago, the boys down in tapes, spinning it back a couple of years to remind us of an indiscretion that you've got to make when you play like Billy Slater. Lulawai, they're right in front of the posts. You can see that they're six metres out. Luke to Jeremy Smith. Oh, my God. Half a metre out. Gallon. Making the tackle with Smith, Luke, oh, bad pass, Ohio, got it on, Marshall's with the ball, he tries something to Kenny Dow, dives on the loose ball himself. So five tackles gone and Marshall's playing the ball. So Ohio comes in as the playmaker, oh, he stabs it, an innocuous kick in there, and Slater got a gift ball kick to him. Well, he did well, Billy Slater, because he was coming straight at his belly, the thoughts of the previous drop would have been on his mind. It was a grab he had to come up with, and now the Australians showing signs of distress. A few of their players hunched over. Cameron Smith trying to marshal them up on the advantage line, saying, get me some metres. Well, keep in mind, they're, they're doing this with 15. Oh, Gidley was taken by Eastwood. He's been lethal, Eastwood, in the last uh, 10 minutes or so of the game. Some of his defence has been great. There's Cameron Smith taken down, again by Eastwood. And players near the halfway line, Australia clinging to a two-point lead. Charged down by Isaac Luke, but it's uh, recovered by Billy Slater. Tackled by Isaac Luke, not held. Then he's claimed and held down by Manu. i got to say, Billy Slater was only back there because I'm sure he was getting some medical attention just before there. Otherwise, he would have been up in the line looking for kick chase. He was back getting medical attention, and the ball landed up in his lap. Here's Greg Bird now. Running at Kenny Dowell and Bronson Harrison. Ten metres into New Zealand's half. Ball played by Greg Bird. Kurt Gidley runs it and he runs it at Eastwood and he drives him down. Superb defence from Eastwood. And now Scott hammers the ball up and Lulawai and Eastwood make that tackle. Australia are 22 metres away. Crump on the short side, rolls one to Nightingale, and Jason is put down. Tackle by Crump and by Tonga. Two and a half minutes, New Zealand on their own line. Trail by two, the Australians. 15 against 17, getting tight, hanging on. Jeremy Smith again, punching it up to the 20 metre line. Tackle by Smith and by Miles. Now it goes over from Fiend and finds Manu. They're out on their feet, New Zealand. So Fiend now for Mannering. And he'll play the ball almost 40 metres up the ground, but they've used five. And here he is again. Marshall shaping the kick, running, passing. A flat ball across for Kenny Dow. Now for Nightingale. Nightingale down the right flank. The ball was touched by Australia. He's headed for the post. Marshall throws the ball. It's a speculator, but it's a try. It's a try for Fiend. Now there's a plenty of inquiry to be done here. Fiend has kicked the ball into the crowd with jubilation. Well, the biggest query is a pass, but we can't rule on it. A 
important. We're looking to see whether the winger Nightingale has put his foot into touch off the pass from Sean Kenny Dow. I think it's fine. Only saw it quickly, but the pass back inside certainly had a question mark on it. Running it on the last. This is Jason Nightingale on the outside of Takiri. He's in play. And that's gone back through the arms of Darren Lockyer. Benji Marshall picks it up. Forget any forward passes. We're not looking at that. That one's gone back. <laughs> and it bounces nicely for Nathan Pete, who looks oh. up. Well, <laughs> can look, you believe it? Well, just to add a little bit more to this script, the start of the year, first game of the year for Nathan Fiend, he cracks an ankle. Here minutes. he is scoring a match-winning try in the Four Nations final. Can you believe this? Benji Marshall has instigated... Well, he's there at the start of this and he's there at the finish of it. He runs the ball on tackle five. He feigned a little kick, he feigned a step, got to the outside, put Kenny Dow outside Tonga. Watch this, watch the genius at work. Tackle play, last play, he goes to the line, feigns the kick, steps to the outside, bullet-like pass to Kenny Dow, on the Nightingale, speculator back in field, who picks it up? Marshall, he looks like he'll score, he won't, he throws it out the back, Fiend picks it up, who can tackle me? No one, we're going to win the Four Nations. <laughs> Unbelievable. Unbelievable. The New Zealand Kiwis, they won the World Cup in 2008. Didn't make the final of this tournament last year. And a great play there. Benji Marshall, he, he steered wide. And by going to that extra man on the outside, that helped create the overlap. Sean Kenny Dell just held it long enough to commit Lottie to Geary. Nightingale did well to stay on, inside the, the touchline. And the backup from the try scorer to be there. And from Benji to stay alive. Phil said they were out on their feet. Well... They found something. Well, Benji found something. You know, after this game, this week, they'll be voting for the Golden Boot Player of the Year. Marshall, I think, has just stamped his name on that trophy. Well, he stamped his name on the Four Nations final. And now, a shot of the Australian bench. What's left of it? Luke Lewis, of course, was lost prior to halftime. Brent Tate. This is the last play. Australia kick off. Into the last section, Hooper in the background. It's come down to Slater, throws it in. Lockyer can't get rid of the ball. It's, it's it. over. It's over. New Zealand have won it three times out of four in the last four majors. They have been successful against Australia. And the field, just a sea of ecstasy and jubilation as the Kiwis take it out. They won the Tri-Nations back in 05, the World Cup in 08. They lost the final of this Tri-Nations in 2006. It then became the Four Nations. So they've racked up three from four and pulled off one of the shocks of the century. Well, it, it's Benji Marshall's greatest ever night, in all honesty. They were down and out. Australia had them where they wanted them. And, and we talked about expectation and the expectation of a country on one man's shoulders. And Benji Marshall has come up with two or three big time plays, big moment plays in the last 10 minutes to snatch victory from the jaws of defeat, the disconsolate faces of the Australians. Benji Marshall, love watching him play every week. But to do it on this level, on this stage, under that pressure, to come up with this, I will never, ever, ever forget this night and what Benji Marshall has done in the last 11 minutes of this game. Stephen Kearney and his assistant, Tony Ira. That was Nathan Fiend. What an end. What a start to the year for him. And what a magnificent end for Nathan Fiend. So New Zealand win the Four Nations. We'll reveal the Papua New Guinea tourism. Man of the match in just a moment. You're watching Channel 9. And now time to present the trophy to the winning team. Nathan Kalis lifted the trophy in 2008 here at Suncorp Stadium. Time to welcome Benji Marshall to the stage as the captain of the Kiwis. Winners tonight, 16 points to 12. Ladies and gentlemen, Benji Marshall.
Here it is, the Rugby League Four Nations Trophy. New Zealand champions savour this moment. Um, you just don't understand how much this means to us uh, tonight. Um, you know, first of all, I'd just like to thank the Australian team uh, for another outstanding solid game. Um, you know, you have been the benchmark for a number of years and we're just trying to close that gap and uh, thank you for the game tonight. Um, just like to thank uh, our major sponsors for New Zealand. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, Flight Centre, uh, Malaysia Airlines and Rivera. You know, we couldn't do it without you guys. Um, also, I'd like to thank uh, Jim Doyle, New Zealand Rugby League staff for for the, the effort they've put in this year and last year to, to get us where we want to be. And uh, before I thank the team, I'd just like to thank the New Zealand supporters for coming out for us tonight. Yeah. We've done it. And uh, last, last of all, to, uh, to my boys, it's a pleasure to stand up here and be your captain. Uh, you know, we've done a lot of hard work. We come back this week. Just for the boys, put your hands in the air. Fist pumping. Yeah. The winners in 2010 of the Rugby League Four Nations, New Zealand. Hey, hey, hey. Raise your right hand. And fist pump.